All right, guys, let's start. Um, welcome once more. And then um, again, we know our um, Zoom rules. Just mute. Unless you want to have an input or want to ask a question, then you can engage. Right. Um, <clears throat> here are our learning objectives. Um, I hope the screen is clear. The colors are not too uh, blurry, maybe for your phones and all that. But this is what we I want us to learn. Learning objectives. At the end of this lesson, you should be able to do this. Just these two things, guys. If you can be able to use the equivalent bending moment and the equivalent torque uh, equations in order to calculate um, principal stress as well as um, uh, shear stress, um, we would have ob uh, obtained our learning ob objectives for, for today. Um, let's look at this uh, in, in, for my introduction. What are we talking about when we're talking about this um, combined bending and twisting of shaft. This is just a background information. <clears throat> as you can see here, this is a bearing. Take it as, as we, we treat this bearing as a support. Uh, and then you've got a pulley there at a particular diameter. You've got a pulley with a particular diameter, which has got two tensions, belts, tensions, T1 and T2. Right, so, so this pulley exerts a weight on the shaft. So the shaft is going to bend because of this weight that is exerted by the, by the pulley. But the same pulley is responsible for rotating the shaft. For, for rotating the shaft. So the shaft is going to be rotating as it bends. So that is what we are basically dealing with. That's why we are saying combine bending and twisting. So the weight of the shaft causes the weight of the shaft plus the weight of the of the of the pulley exerts a a force exerts a a force which will bend the uh, which is going to bend the 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 just just get rid of this quickly which is just going to bend the 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 pulley right and then when the pulley bends when the pulley bends, then uh, it's going to be spinning uh, or, or rotating, which means it's bending and turning at the same time. So it's, it experiences both torque and uh, bending at the same time. Guys, it bending, for bending purposes, uh, we go back to chapter 3, um, to, to how the, 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 the shaft is going to be supported. If it's simply supported, you know what to do. If it's simply supported with the weight, you know what to do. So that those same uh, examples of, um, of of chapter 3 uh, we are going to use them here so here you've got one bearing meaning that this is a cantilever this would be a cantilever so whenever you see that a a pulley is overhanging a bearing that's a cantilever so the figure above shows a pulley overhanging a bearing by a certain length uh, this is an example of a bending and twisting shaft because this shaft is going to bend because it has got a weight and then uh, this shaft is also going to twist because of the tensions that are going to be spinning this uh, shaft the twisting is due to the turning of the pulley yes the turning of the pulley while the bending is due to what the weight of the pulley the tensions on the belt as well as the the weight of the shaft so they are they um yeah whereby the weight of the shaft is obviously the the tensions on the belt which is T1 plus T2. If you if you if you remember your your basics there. All right. Can I move on from here? Uh, is it is it making sense? Or what is what do we mean by combined bending and twisting of a shaft? Does this example make sense? Are we still together there? Good people. Yes, sir. Oh, okay. Thank you, my name. All right. <clears throat> so if this example makes sense for what you are going to be discussing, we can move on. All right. Now, mm -hmm. okay. <clears throat> now, what happens when you have got a pulley on a shaft? <clears throat> Just like the way we we, we, you saw up there 
when a pulley rests between two bearings, between two bearings, so that one will be treated as a simple uh, as a simple supported beam. So if there's a pulley between two bearings, in other words, there's a shaft, there's a pulley. I mean, sorry, there's a bearing and a bearing, and then you've got a a, a pulley there, Re regardless of where the position of the pulley is. But that pulley is going to exert a a weight, which means this will cause a a bending of a shaft. So, and then the weight of the pulley will be calculated as this, like I told you, uh, T1 plus T2. Now, when a pulley overhangs a bearing, as, 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 of in, in, as in the introduction, it is treated as a cantilever. So, um, between bearings, simply supported, overhanging a bearing, that's a cantilever. Remember, chapter 3 equations, they apply here. Uh, if, the, uh, if the weight of the beam is given, then, or if the weight of the beam can be calculated of the beam, not of the pull of the beam, can be calculated, then you will know that you have to use the, the one with a, a UTL and a point load. All right. Now, <clears throat> the torque can be transmitted. Uh, I mean, the torque transmitted can be due to power transmitted as well. Or, or it's due to power transmitted. Because power is equal to 2 pi nt. But that torque of power is mean torque, guys, or average torque. It's mean torque. Uh, in maximum torque is T1 minus T2 times R. I'm sure you also know this from science. You are people of mechanical. Now, what, how do we then convert the mean torque into a maximum torque? For instance, a maximum torque is greater than the mean torque. So they can say the mean torque is 20% greater than the mean torque. The maximum torque is 20% greater than the, the mean torque. If it's greater than... People, we did power machines. I remember that um, when we spoke of excess A, we always added excess uh, X. So here it, it is the excess of uh, the torque in relation to the mean. How much extra it is by. So if it's extra by 20%, it's, it's 100 plus 20 of 100. If it's extra by 5%, 100 plus 5 of 100. So X is the percentage difference. The percentage difference between the, the maximum torque and the mean torque. But remember, the maximum torque is always greater than the mean torque. Right. So, we are going to do such questions. For example, for example, I just want to see something where I can basically explain this. Okay, but you will see it on, when you are doing our examples. Well. You will see it on, when you are doing examples. All right. <clears throat> What is the bending of a shaft on its own? What is the bending of a shaft on its own? We are not combining them as yet. We're just basically dealing with the bending of a shaft. How do we calculate the bending of a shaft? Considering the bending of a shaft only, no torque. No torque for now. We, although we are going to have com a combination of it later on, but for now, no torque. Guys, we can manipulate them. It's there on our, form, on, on our textbooks, but what, is what we are interested in is this. That the bending stress is equal to 32m, m being the maximum bending moment, pi d4. Now, how do we find the maximum bending moment again? Chapter 3, those um, m is equal to wl over 4, all of those equ equ equations there, depending on the loading of the, of the thing. Now, you can see here that you've got this, which is supported here and here. Probably it has got a load here that is, that is causing this thing to bend, the weight. At the bottom there, there is tension. It is tearing. At the top there, there is compression. It's, a, it's just a very good uh, picture that can show us uh, illustration of how we get compression and tension. But we are not interested in that. And then the bending, uh, this is the bending stress and the diameter of the shaft, this one. If it is solid, guys, this is the diameter of the shaft. But if, it is, if it's not solid, we are still going to discuss that. So that's how you calculate bending of a shaft only when there is bending, no consideration of torque. All right. Now, how do you calculate the torque in a shaft? Not just torque, but torque causes shear stress. Torsion causes shear. Uh, it causes shear stress. So how do you calculate that shear stress there? Shear stress is equal to 16 torque. T being the maximum torque. Again, I highlighted this because 
we've got mean torque. So you, if you calculate mean torque, uh, you have to convert it into maximum torque. But if there's no percentage extra between mean torque and uh, given, between mean torque and um, uh, what you call this uh, uh, maximum torque, we assume that they are equal if there is no the percentage difference given. So this is a maximum torque. Um, six, and then the diameter d cubed, which is the diameter of the shaft d cubed. All right. Um, this is how torsion takes place without or ignoring the, what, the bending. So we are still taking them individually, uh, shear stress as well as bending stress individually. Now we are going to go to a place where we combine them. Now, now we are combining them. A combined bending and twisting, uh, how, what, what happens there? You can see that there are two bearings there. There's a bearing and then there's a bearing. And then this is rotating. You can see the rotation. And you've got a weight, which means this thing is bending. Now, this is a combined because you see both of them and we cannot ignore them. Now, when they are combined like this, guys, when they are combined like this, the maximum, we, we, we get two stresses, which is the maximum principal stress, principal stress, which before we, we used to call it a bending stress. And then we're going to get a maximum shear stress, which before it was just a shear stress, when we we're not considering the, the other, the other we, when we we're considering them as normal. So, so this will produce two stresses, principal stress and the shear stress. The information about these or what the, they are and so forth, you'll find them there on page 231. They will tell you that maximum stress, uh, maximum principal stress is the failure that will occur uh, when the principal stress in the complex system reaches its maximum value. And then is shear stress, it implies the failure which occurs when the maximum shear stress in the complex system is, is also reached. So these are the maximum uh, stresses that we are going to have when we combine the bending and the twisting. But let's exp explore deeper in this. Now, <clears throat> equivalent bending moment equation. Now we are combining them, guys. In this topic, we are always going to be combining them anyway. Now we are combining torque and um, a torque as well as a bending moment. Right. Um, here, there's a small error that I'm I'm picking up, uh, like as I as I speak. Uh, this is d to the power three. Okay. Just wanted to correct that error first. Okay, <clears throat> so what we are saying here is that equivalent bending moment equation, ME. This is the bend. This is the. This is like the resultant bending a uh, moment. The resultant bending moment when we take into consideration the torque together with a uh, bending moment into account. It gives us this one value of ME, which goes into our principal stress. This is principal stress. To calculate the principal stress, 32 Me pi d cubed. 32 Me pi d cubed. So, so if, if you are given a principal stress, which means you have to find Me, because the principal stress is, is as a result of equivalent bending moment. Uh, this uh, principal stress comes from uh, bending because it's, uh, this stress is bending, actual. It's bending stress. But now when you have got more than one um, in, uh, energy or I can say moment and the torque acting or both of them acting, it's no longer going to be just bending, but it's going to be equivalent bending uh, uh, moment, which will give us the principal stress. This is how we use this. So this is like the combination of m and t torque and m to give us the equivalent bending moment now e on the other hand e guessed equivalent torque equation it's where you're calculating the shear stress it helps us find the shear stress but instead of having torque just maximum torque remember we are combining the two so it is m plus t this is how we combine them to find te which is the equivalent so in other words it is th this te or equivalent torque 
can replace M and T. So that's why I say it's a resultant of M and T. That's why we've got TE there. So when we calculate TE, it means it's going to help us to find what? The shear stress. The maximum shear stress. 16 pi D cubed uh, also. Now, all of this D cubed, guys, it's because this thing is a what? It's a solid shaft. It is a solid shaft. If it is a... And I, did, um, and I don't have this on my, on, on my notes. So I'm going to draw your attention to page 232. Page 232. If you can go there. At the bottom there. Uh, that is where you are going to see what are you going to do if it is a hollow shaft. Because now I'm just dealing with a solid shaft here. I worked on, on a solid shaft. So if it's a hollow shaft. D cubed is replaced by d to the power 4 external minus d to the power 4 internal diameter all over external diameter but you are, you are going to see where you are going to use that and also my examples are going to help you guys a lot in going forward right now i'm on the exercise 9.1 i'm gonna do number five with you can i still go on guys yes, sir. okay thank you so i'm on exercise um you, you are allowed to ask questions you are allowed to ask questions please now a pulley with an effective diameter overhangs already when we know that it, it overhangs a bearing so we are talking about a cantilever overhangs a bearing by what by 130 mm meaning that this is the length of the pool or of the of the shaft from the center of the bearing the flat belt vertical and parallel and tension of a slack side is t2 and t1 this is the tight side respectively now this is where the question is calculate the diameter of a solid shaft if the allowable stresses are, are not to exceed are not to exceed what 40 mpa allowable stresses meaning both stresses are not to are not to exceed 40 mpa meaning that remember here we've got two stresses principal stress ne shear stress both of them are 40 now they are saying we must calculate the diameter of the solid shaft allowable for both stresses in other words we are going to calculate the diameter considering the first a limit and calculate diameter considering the second limit that's why you've got two answers because both of them are going to give us a different so let's get our data we've got 400 is our diameter we said the length is 130 we said t2 is 400 because it's it's a, it is the slack side first then t1 is 2000 t1 is always the tight one respectively calculate the diameter of a solid shaft Calculate the diameter of a solid shaft. Uh, if the stresses are, so we've got shear stress as well as principal stress, are both 40. Let's draw this diagram. So it's the same one like the one that I, I have on the introduction because it's a bearing. The length is 130. Then we've got the tight side and the slack side. Okay. The principal stress is there. The shear stress is there. Let us find the, let's consider the principal stress limit first and find the diameter. The principal stress is this one here. Now, the principal stress, we know it that it is equal to what? We know that the principal stress, guys, is equal to um, a 32 Me. So we need to find Me. Now, for us to, to be able to find Me, let me go back a little bit. We are using a, a principal stress. Yeah, with this one here. We are using this one here. Let's just get rid of this a bit. We are using this. We are using this principal stress for our first limit. Now, if we have to use this for our first limit, guys, it means we need to find ME to find that diameter there d if we are using this uh, bending uh, limit 
now if you're using the bending limit it means after to find me you need to find m as well as torque maximum bending moment as well as, well as maximum stress i mean maximum torque we need to find these two now how do we find these two the torque we know how we know how we are going to find the torque uh, we also need to know how to find m m it's a cantilever m is a cantilever guys m is a cantilever meaning that a uh, is going to be like and we are not told anything about the weight of the shaft so we ignore that so this is how you calculate m on a cantilever chapter three remember it's wl and then w you know w is t1 plus t2 t1 plus t2 which is 2400 times l which is 0 0.13 this l it's a cantilever guys chapter three equation now you need to find torque Talk, we said it's t1 minus t2 multiplied by radius multiply by the radius um somebody is going to just check this one for me i might have made a mistake here on this 0 comma 2 is supposed to be 0 comma 2 can you can, can somebody punch this for me with 0 comma 2 maybe the answer is correct but i just substituted a wrong value there because if the diameter is 400 the radius must be 0 comma 2 just just check it for me uh, t1 minus t2 multiplied by radius is this going to be the right answer if yes, the oh if the radius is 0 comma 2 ne? yes all right thank you so it's just a matter of just changing this one all right thank you um then a uh, so we've got m and t remember i said we are using the principal stress limit now when we are using the principal stress limit uh, when we're using a principal stress limit me is equal to okay this one was was just the weight how we calculated the weight there oh sorry the, the yes the weight of the of the shaft that's fine not of the shaft of the pulley all right now to get me this is it since we're using principal principal stress we have to get the value of me which is 1 over 2 m plus square root of m squared t so we just substitute here for the for the for, for the principal stress limit remember principal stress it is this it is this which needs me or which is as a result of me so when we substitute that you get 379.464 right then uh, we calculate now now we want to find the diameter now here's the diameter we're looking for so we're going to substitute everything make make d the subject of the formula d cube is 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 is, is going to be like that we are now in n6 we, we're not going to be teaching a um, manipulation of formulas guys but d is equal to the cube root of 32 me over pi principal stress substitute all of the information there you will get that your diameter is 45.88 millimeters that is the first diameter that you are going to be having right number two um we are now going to consider the shear limit the shear stress limit now the shear stress limit it is this it is this one here which we know it needs torque it needs te and te is going to be this is equal to m squared plus t squared we we, we already calculated m and t so we just substitute them uh, 320 squared plus 312 squared which means the equivalent torque will be 446.927 right then again we do the same thing we, we do have this we have calculated that now we're looking for a diameter which is going to be a uh, 16 te cube root of 16 te pi a uh, shear stress you substitute all of your values you get 38.464 millimeters there's something that they never said but on the on the on the exam they can ask they can say now which one are you going to use between the two which one is the allowable between these two diameters which one is the allowable between the two diameters let me just quickly try and explain that um obviously this diameter was found using a shear stress this diameter was found using a principal stress 
Now, let's take this diameter to the, the, that we found on the principal stress and substitute it on the maximum torque and see how much stress are we going to be having. So, we know obviously when we substitute this 38 here, we are going to get 40, guys, because that's how we got this anyway. But now, let's substitute the other diameter, we get 23, right? Now, let's take this diameter here and substitute it on the principal stress and see how much we, 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 we are going to be getting. Because if we substitute 45, we are going to go back to 40 anyway. So, we, we substitute this one. We get how much? 62. Now, which one is, is allowable between the two? The limit, guys, is how much? It's 40. So, this one is beyond 40 now, this one. This diameter of 38 on the shear stress will be above 40. So, we can't use this one. So, which one are we going to use? We're going to use a diameter of 45 because it satisfies both limits. That is what we are going to be doing. Because this 38 cannot satisfy the principal stress because it goes beyond 40. But the 45 satisfies a, the shear stress as well as the principal stress. The 45 millimeters. Okay. They, they didn't ask that, but I'm just saying, just in case you do get a question like that, where you have to identify. Um... Also, on the same exercise, I'm doing number seven. No, number six. Number six. Um, before, before, before I run away. Are there any questions on this one, guys? Any questions? No, sir, thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay. <clears throat> we are left with 10 minutes. Let's, let's, let's push this, this, this example. Okay. A flywheel is mounted on a solid shaft of which the bearings are 1.5 meters apart. Now, we've got, a, this one is having bearings, two of them, which are apart, meaning this is a simply supported. The flywheel is mounted 0 0.5 meters from one bearing and the density of the shaft. Now, the moment we are given the density of the shaft, guys, the moment we are given the density of the shaft, it tells us that we have the mass of the shaft, mean, meaning that we are taking the mass of the shaft into consideration. With a shaft diameter of 80 millimeters, according to calculations, uh, equivalent bending moment of a shaft is... So, according to calculations, they are already giving us the equivalent bending moment. ME is that. And they are giving us the, the torque. TE is this. Use this information to check to see if the ma mass of the flywheel is 199. In other words, they are giving us that the mass of the flywheel is 199. Prove it. Let's prove that. Let's get our data. The diameter is uh, 80 millimeters. The length is 1.5. Uh, ME is 1181. TE is 1615 given. Now we just need to draw the diagram, guys, because this one is a simply supported. Um, with W not at a center. W is not, is not at the center. And remember, we've got a UTL here because we are given the weight of the we're given the weight of the shaft. Or the density of the shaft, we can find the weight of the shaft. Alright. So <clears throat> Let's see. Now, guys, we need to find the weight of the shaft. Or the mass, in fact, because here, it's not just the weight here. It is the mass of the shaft because it's in kilograms. Prove that it's in kilograms, 199 kilograms. Meaning that we have to fi first find the weight of the pulley. We want the weight of the pulley. Then that weight of the pool is equal to m mg. mg is equal to the weight. This one. So that's where the mass is. That's where the mass is. So we have to find that weight. But how do we find that weight, guys? 
How do we find that weight? We've done this a number of times. Um, page number... Oh, we are running out of time. Page 47, chapter 3. When we are calculating a, a maximum bending moment of a of a beam with A and B. Of A and B. That is what we are going to be using. So we have, so we have to calculate the reaction. We have to do a lot of things, but let me just let me just walk you through it, guys. Alright. First things first, let's get the UTL of the of the beam. Let's get the UTL of the beam. Because we, we, we know that we are giving a thing. So let's get the UTL of a beam. Right. Uh, the weight per meter of the beam is volume density times gravity. For our volume, guys, I just chose this small formula here, which is pi r squared, which is area. Because volume is area times length. Area times length. So instead of using pi t squared over 4, it's okay. I just use pi r squared. It's still area, guys. I, I'm sure you are aware of that. Times 1. My length is 1. Not, not 1.5 because I want this to be per meter. If I multiply by 1.5, then I'll be calculating a point load of a, of a UTL at the center. Now I want the, 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 the UTL. The, the UTL value of it. Times the density times 9.8. Times the density times 9.8. I got 7. I got I got that Newton per meter. Per 1 meter. Because the length there was 1 meter. 8, 887. So now I know that I've got the UTL here. Now after finding the UTL, you take moment about A or B. It's up to you. To calculate one reaction. I'm saying that because it's there on page uh, 47. It is there on page 47. Where it says calculate what? Uh, what uh, page page forty eight? In fact, when you go together, they they say determine the reactions of the support, draw the shear force, calculate the maximum bending moment, and all of that. I'm just following those steps. Do you see them? Yes, I'm Pardon me. I'm just basically following those steps, um, where I I find now the the reaction A in terms of weight. So the reaction of A, guys, taking moment about B, taking moment about B. So this is our turning point. Clockwise moment equals to anti-clockwise moment. A is going anti-clockwise. Multiply by what? By 1.5. So A times 1.5. Then you've got um w this is the weight capital letter weight this one multiply by what by 1.5 by by 1 because the distance from here to today is, is 1 then you add what um this one which should be at the center the weight of the beam which will be 384 0.65 multiplied by 1.5 and then this is now the total weight multiplied by the center the center of 1.5 is 0 0.75 then you get this reaction a right from reaction a guys then you have to calculate the maximum bending moment the maximum bending the maximum bending moment is always here on the pulley it's always on the pulley guys the maximum bending moment and i hope we still remember how to calculate the maximum bending moment from from n4 5 and now we are in n6 and we've done it uh, even on that previous um chapter two quickly we say maximum bending moment is here so we already have the value of a so we are going to come from the side of a so it's going to be a multiplied by 0 0.5 a multiplied by 0 0.5 to to here that's why you see 0 0.5 and this is a this is the value of a this one it's here a times 0 0.5 
minus because there's going to be a value there which is going to be 384.5 multiplied by 0 0.5 to get it to get its total value then you multiply by half of that to come to come to w which is 0 0.25 then you get that m is is that amount the maximum moment now once we know the maximum moment guys now we have to go and calculate the actual value of the maximum moment so we can substitute it here and then we can find the what the weight then we know when we find the weight what do we have we can find the mass right now how do we find the the maximum value we know that we are given te te is that is the equation for it but we can make we can make t the subject of the formula here in this in this equation when we make t the subject of the formula t squared is going to be uh, you square this side and then you, you you transpose m it becomes minus that's equation two so because we are going to be using a lot of equations here right then from there you have got this m which is given so you are looking for m this one here so the torque you already have this is the torque you just replace because it's already squared you don't even have to square them you just replace you have got something like this this is the torque now you can see that this is minus and this is positive it they will cancel off and then because of you will be left with the square root which will cancel the which will cancel that square then you are left with this as equation three where this one over two goes to the other side it, it multiplies you get this value right then from here you can solve for m by taking this one across you'll have two two six two or you can substitute the m this one here that you already calculated into here into the m before we were slightly interrupted was that <clears throat> i was just trying to show you that once you get this obviously this one over two will come here now you are just using your um excuse me you are just using your your mathematics now to say equation one i'm substituting it into equation three where m here is going to be 0 0.0335 uh, weight plus this you just substitute it there plus don't forget m which is one, uh, one six one five then you just open your bracket and then you transpose when you open your bracket take everything across you get 650 is equal to 0 0.335 w and then we can divide both sides by what by 0 0.335 we get the weight is equal to 1952 now from the weight we know what to do guys weight this is the weight of the pulley this one do they want the mass of the pulley so we know that uh, the mass of the pulley will be weight over 9.8 i run out of space here to just uh, write that equation but mass is equal to w divided by gravity gravitational acceleration which is going to give us a 199 kilograms this is the answer we are looking for this is the answer we are looking for there is a little bit of work to do here you have got to understand uh, because we are still going to go through your 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 examples you are going to see where they utilize e, e density to find e and here don't make a mistake here this is just the area pi r squared times one because this is must be per meter per one meter then the density times 9.8 that's how i got them the 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 utl of the shaft the weight of the shaft itself then uh, take moment about b or you can take moment about a May, maybe if you are redoing the same thing just take moment about a if you want to see that uh, so you, you 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 understand it take moment about a calculate the reaction a and then you come from a to calculate the maximum moment meaning to, to sorry from the side of b which would be b multiplied by one multiplied by this weight here of the shaft on this side which will be the weight of the shaft this side which will be how much uh, which will be 384.62 newton multiplied by one 
to get the what the point load value of that because we are only working with this side again okay? only working with this side we are calculating a pending moment from b when you're calculating from a you're only working with this one side that's why we, we worked with 0 0.5 and 0 0.25 so <clears throat> you only cal so once you get that weight then the distance from there to there will be 0 0.5 so you can calculate the maximum pending moment coming from the side of b if you calculated reaction b but this side is always going to be the same this one because <clears throat> Because we need this. We've got ME, but we don't have torque and we don't have. So we make torque the subject of the formula here. T squared. Then you take this equation 2, you just substitute it there. There it is. Remember, this 2 will cancel off. You are left with this square root of 166, 1615. Then it cancels off. Then you are left with this and this mass 1.5 0 0.5 has gone across to multiply by 2 you you are left with equation 3 right. then equation 3 you've got m you substitute equation 1 there well, if you had calculated for reaction b so you'll be calculating the m according to reaction b but it will still be the same thing it will give us the same thing in fact i believe what this m will be the same even if you calculate using what a uh, reaction b you will still get the same m you will still get the same m because the maximum bending moment is the same whether you're coming from the left or from the right all right um any questions guys with this exercise because i'm going to ask you to to complete that exercise that i've just started number five and six i'm going to ask you to complete it with my interest um okay number nine you are going to try guys also look at examples now where they are going to use hollow a uh, hollow diameter um diameters how to how to calculate because um, uh, i'm I've basically done with solid Ex example 9.3 they 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 do do using a uh, the the hollow one so with my interest highly on 9 and 10 not only that I'm at the others you don't do but 9 and 10 um, but all of them if if you can start on number just number one so you can get the flow of things moving forward but the solid of it starts there on number seven going downwards guys it is a very very simple chapter um, please attempt it any questions before I close any questions? Sri Kau fell about you, guy, but now. They are no longer Kau fell. Guys, you know when we when we are meeting again again on Tuesday, we are meeting. Supposedly, if they should open, they they might open um so we are going to meet on tuesday then we are going to continue on this but this chapter is basically done according to the everything that i've given you ask me questions or ask each other questions where you don't understand where you can't help each other then i will intervene i have sent you a from the department of education let me just uh stop recording <clears throat>